Welcome back to another Sims 4 video. Today, we're going to be furnishing this Realm of Magic Witch's Tower of a Home. Now, those of you that have been watching the channel for a while will recognize this as the home of Column Big Wallet. And those of you that don't know anything about that, don't worry. All you got to know is this house was built during my Realm of Magic Let's Play, which I will link down below if you're interested in watching that. And then subsequently in the Dream Home Decorator Let's Play that I did, uh, my sim would come here and do renovations. Now, the problem with that is that with Dream Home Decorator, your sim is uh, assigned random likes and dislikes. So we got random colors and styles and the home started ending up looking like some contemporary regular sort of home on the inside, whereas the outside almost looks like a castle slash, you know, old Victorian style home. And that was just kind of ridiculous. And anyway, so I never furnished this house. I never finished it. It's been about three years since I built it. And you guys have been asking me relentlessly to go back furnish it and that's what we're doing today so i started off by stripping out all the furniture and everything we had put in there because like i said it didn't make any sense all the styles were all different and nothing really looked good or made sense also i had visited here and stolen stuff with a kleptomaniac trait so even the stuff that i had built i had also stolen stuff from it so you know it, it wasn't working out great but yeah so i started off by changing the floor plan of this ground floor to give a few more rooms because if this is an older house especially this almost castle-y pokey victorian vibe i was like we need some more rooms we need to break it up a little bit more because being that open plan i don't think really made sense so instead uh we've got a bath bathroom just here that I'm doing flooring in now. The kitchen area is still in the same space, so that largest uh, like sort of back room there. And um, then we have, you know, a hallway and I did like a home office and then there's going to be like a living room area. And we'll obviously get to all those in time. Now, I was trying to make this as magic-y looking as possible. So I'm trying to use a lot of Realm of Magic. There's also, I think, some vampires and probably some werewolves because those three packs tend to go together pretty well. I also use this little uh, turret for the dining area. I don't think it'll work particularly well. Like, I don't know that they'll be able to get around the back, but the front two chairs should be usable. Um, yeah, there's no real dining space in this house. I was going to put it in this larger area, but they just turned that into more of a cooking space and, and it sort of filled it in that way. I think it turned out pretty well. And as you can see, I actually darkened down the kitchen because I felt it was a little too light. Because again, this is like an older home, almost, you know, castle-y. Not fully castle, but, you know, got little elements here and there. So I was like, let's darken it down. Also bringing in Batu. We got the Batu tiles. We got a Batu table. Look, they're magic. So magic, sci-fi, you know, it's kind of similar. Why not have that in there? And of course, we've also got lots of plants, lots of greenery uh, because of potion brewing and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's something that spellcasters would typically have around the place. And obviously a lot of those items came in a realm of magic as well. So placing those in. Now, something while building this house, you'll probably notice I forgot um, is I didn't do a pet bowl or like toys or any of that stuff because Colin Big Wallet, Big Wallet does have a dog named Ticket. Uh, who is her familiar. Uh, I do add that in, but it's just, it's just not on the time lapse because once I went into live mode, I was like, oh yeah, I should probably add that. So anyway, that, that is added in in case you're worried about that. Now, yeah, just lots of little details and plants and all that kind of stuff going on here. I'm actually really quite happy with this little kitchen space. You know, it's simple. It's still a galley kitchen like it originally was, but I think it works pretty dang well. Uh, and then this is a bathroom here. We finally have a bathroom on the ground floor because in this house before, I think we had a bathroom in the basement and then the second floor of the house. And then like the ground floor, we had nothing. So I was like, we should probably have something down here because if we ever decide to actually play in this house, it's going to be super annoying. Speaking of playing in this house, I will be uploading this to the gallery. So if you want to download it, I'll link it in the description down below. Uh, otherwise, you can find it on my gallery, which is James Turner YT. Uh, and it will be that, you know, it's going to be beautiful. It's a beautiful house. It fits nicely into Glimmerbrook. Oh, also, I think it cost a million simoleons at the end of this. And that's primarily because uh, we have all the money trees. There's like, I don't know how many money trees, like 25 money trees and a greenhouse out the front. Yeah, there's lots of money. So this is, I guess, technically probably the most legitimate expensive house I've ever built because everything I'm placing and building is with money I've earned through gameplay. Yes, I have 1.4 million and I earned it through cloning money trees, but I earned it through the gameplay. I didn't cheat it at all. Uh, so this is, I guess, the most 
expensive house I've ever built. It ends up being a million dollars. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so this is a little home office just here in the middle. Um, it's just, uh, you know, a little desk and computer. I figured, you know, computer's always useful to have. Put it in there. I think I used yeah, the cottage living one because it's kind of old, looks like a typewriter. Kind of thought it looked maybe a little bit mystical, a little bit magical. Uh, now the lighting options in Realm of Magic are pretty limited. We have like candles and like orbs and like that bug light thing. So <laughs> that's what I'm using throughout this. I think I think it works, you know. I think the whole vibe of this house does come across really nicely in the end. I'm actually pretty keen about it. It's a shame that we never got to live in this house in the actual Let's Play. <laughs> we just had like an empty home the whole time. Oh, and actually when I came back to this house because Colin Bigwell at The Sim Who Lives Here, she had a son named Reginald, who you may know from my current high school years Let's Play. He's The Sim in that. Um, but yeah, he was a toddler for about, I don't know, probably two years, like real time, like while I was doing other Let's Plays. And there's just messes all over the ground, like from to like the toddler. So I came back and I had to like clean it all up so we could build it. Now, also down the bottom, I actually had fun with this. So at the bottom of this turret, I added a bunch of those open windows, which I thought looked pretty cool. And I turned this into like, a, well, I don't want to say a greenhouse, but like a little, um, I don't know, planting space, potted plant area, little garden. Let's just say garden, there you go. And flower arranging table. I thought this was really nice. And there is a couple of pots here, so you can actually plant stuff. Uh, but it's mostly just for looks and if you want to do some flower arranging, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, we got some of the vertical planters. Uh, yeah, I think it makes really good use of that space because it is detached from the rest of the house. On the level above, it's actually joined uh, with walls, so we, that is part of the room. But down here, it's like, we might as well turn it into like kind of like an outdoor balcony space that we can use. Now, I did build this house, you know, like three years ago, but I never really finished it. Not just the furnishing, but even the outside, like where some windows are, and where some, you know, architectural elements are, I kind of just plonk stuff down. So there's a few little changes I make throughout this, nothing major, it's mostly the same. Um, and, and it turns out, I think, pretty good. Uh, and now this area here, I actually cut this room in half because this was like one really long room, as you saw before, which was kind of awkward and a little bit annoying to furnish. So I figured I'd turn this into almost like, I guess like a parlor or something. Not really, but you know, we've got a chess table, got like a little reading corner. So, you know, it's just a nice, I guess, a, more like a, probably a foyer. Like it's a foyer to the back. Like we got one to the front or the other side of the house. I don't know. It's just kind of like an awkward space I couldn't really do much with. So we put the chess table in there, mirror, little armchair, and then we have the living room behind those two doors, which I believe are vampire doors. And then I'm using the, the couches here from uh, Realm of Magic, which have a lot of wood. There's a lot of like organic sort of wood shapes for Realm of Magic, which I think is quite nice. I don't know if it'd be the most comfortable couches, but... I think it works. And like I said, we're trying to make this house as magic-y as possible because that's what it was always supposed to be. So we're going to make it happen finally, three years later. And actually, speaking of three years later, it's been more than three years, but The Sims 4 Hotel Build Part 4. Do not forget, I promised I would do Part 4 uh, if you guys went to my subreddit uh, and followed or joined the subreddit. And, and make sure you're active on there because if we hit 25,000 members on that subreddit, Part 4 is coming. And we're not that far away. I think only a few thousand people need to go join my subreddit. Uh, there's some great posts on there. There's really good discussions as well. I'm often there reading it. Sometimes I'll post there as well, but I do often read all the new posts that pop up. So if you're interested in getting something to me or getting something to my attention, it's a great place to do that. There's some really good like discussion threads there as well on new Let's Play parts when they come up. Um, it's just a really nice community. Lots of fun there, lots of lovely people. So do join it. And again, if we hit 25,000 members there, we're gonna get Hotel Build Part 4, uh, which is pretty epic. <laughs> so, I think that's, I don't know how old that is now, maybe like six years, five years, I don't know. One of those, it's a long time. Anyway, down in the, the basement here, this was like an old gym and uh, bathroom that you saw there, very contemporary. Uh, I was considering just deleting it, but I quite like the stairs, how they come down, they do the sort of wraparound stairs. I was like, let's just make this look a little bit more I don't know, made out of stone, a little bit older. So I was like, let's just change it to like bricks and the Batu tiles, get a suit of armor, you know, why not? And then I use like the werewolf workout equipment, which I mean, doesn't necessarily fit the best, but it, it fits better than like the super modern stuff anyway. And I think the great thing about this basement is you don't have to worry about how they got anything down here because they're spellcasters. They could just magic stuff in there. <laughs> That's my theory because, I, yeah, I don't know how easy it would be to get stuff through those doors and down those stairs, especially that huge, like, weights machine. I mean, I guess it would come apart, but it still wouldn't be easy. 
Uh, now, I'm just trying to find a nice little thing to put in the stairs there, and I believe that's like a Batu sculpture from Journey to Batu, so that's kind of fun. Um, and then we're moving up to the second floor here. Now, I believe I cut out a little bit of time. Yeah, here I've already jumped forward because I spent a while trying to figure out a good floor plan because uh, it was a little complicated due to the, the shape. The shape of this place up here is really weird. Uh, end up with four bedrooms. I think originally there was three I had up here. We've got four bedrooms, three bathrooms on this level. So there's two ensuite bathrooms, uh, which I think work out pretty well. And I decided to put this bed on a platform, which I kind of later discovered was maybe not the best idea because it does stick a little bit through the level above, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it's fine. You don't really, you know what? You're going to notice it now. If I didn't point it out, it would have been fine. So this room is for Plantain, which is Column's half sister who lives with her. It's also a spell cast. So this is her room. Nice. Uh, it's going to have a little ensuite for it as well. It's got uh, a nice little sort of almost walk-in robe area. All in all, I think it's a it's a pretty nice room, albeit such a weird shape. Like the walk-in robe area, I did that because it was like we had this two by two cutout with a window. <laughs> I was like, what am I gonna do with this? So I was like, oh, we'll put the dresser in there. That'll be fine. And we got this little sitting area here with a nice mirror. You know, I think it's lovely. I think it's very lovely, it's very welcoming. We've also got the uh, the crystal ball from paranormal stuff on the table. I don't know if you can do anything with that if it's not on a dining table, but I thought it looked cool and it seemed magic-y, so <laughs> I put that in. And we got some more of those wacky lights, you know, the candelabras, the wall sconces, those are kind of normal, then there's the bug ones. Now all the bathrooms, at least on this level, are pretty much the same, very similar to the one downstairs as well. The basement one was a little bit different, that was like darker in color, but you know, keeping it pretty consistent throughout, uh, which I think makes sense. Uh, and then this room here is for Column, uh, which this was her room originally, it was down the end of the house here. It was a little bit bigger before, but I made it a bit smaller to accommodate the two, uh, what uh, ensuite bathrooms, I forgot the, the name of it for a second. Yeah, to accommodate the two bathrooms, which I thought made sense, because otherwise, again, there's no bathroom for like a long way to go, so I, I figured that would work. Also, having said that, I kind of just realized they are spell casters, uh, so, you know, they have the plentiful needs potion and also teleportation. So even if they d couldn't have the potion, they could teleport to a bathroom. So I guess it doesn't really matter. But speaking of teleportation, we will see a use of that a little bit later on, which is kind of fun. Uh, now, at this point, I'm just kind of going through all the realm of magic stuff, like in the bedroom there, just trying to find what I could put in there that I haven't already. So we got that sort of... Uh, uh, what do we call it? like shelving unit? It's got a bunch of like potions and sort of stuff sitting on it, bottles and I don't know, interesting little knickknacks that uh, I think suit the room quite nicely. And then I'm just making sure the bathrooms each have you know toilet paper, towels, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Again, not that that really matters, but you know it's there. It's there if you need it. Now we have uh, this little hallway area, which I turned into like a little reading area, nice little bench. You can go there, grab a tome, a magical tome, hang out and read it. Got some of the uh, carpet runners as well down the hallway. I figured this was the perfect place to use these. I don't often use these uh, rugs from Realm of Magic, but they are really good for just hallway spaces because you can make it as long as you want. They tile perfectly. Um, and then we got two more bedrooms. Uh, this, well, this whole space used to be one bedroom. It was Reginald, like I mentioned earlier, he used to live here as a toddler for about two years. Uh, but I split it into two rooms because I figured it'd be more useful that way rather than a three bedroom house. So we got this one here, which is, I guess, just a generic single bedroom, maybe kids, maybe teens. And then the other bedroom in the turret that we turn that into like a little nursery as well. So if there's a baby, there's a space for it, which is pretty nice, I'd say so. I also kind of had a bit of fun placing the bed on a diagonal, which I don't normally do, but I figured it was a little bit more dynamic, a little bit magical, you could say. I mean, it's not that magical, but yeah, <laughs> you know, a little bit of fun. Did get a computer in here too, so if it was a kid or a teen and they needed to use a computer, build some skills or whatever, they've got the option to do that. Because uh, we do have that other computer downstairs, but it's always good to have multiple if you have a family, because otherwise it just gets messy really quickly. And, you know, I think that room turned out quite nicely. Oh, this is actually kind of random. Um, okay, so this bathroom here, this is not random, that's fine. But we have that three by three room just next to the bathroom there. I had no idea what to put in that. Like, literally zero idea. Uh, so what I put in there is <laughs> kind of weird, but, you know, we'll see it in a minute. Anyway, this bathroom, similar uh, color scheme to the basement one, because the two ensuite bathrooms sort of match 
the one on the ground floor. Uh, so I wanted this one to look a little different. Otherwise, all the bathrooms would be way too identical. Uh, and like I said, this is the nursery here, which I think is pretty cute in the end. We got the little uh, the spellcaster crib or bassinet, I should say, and then a bunch of like toys and and also uh, kids and toddlers stuff just in here for later on. I think this would be a pretty sweet bedroom to have if I do say so myself. Uh, nice little bookcase and toy chest. So yeah, you could definitely raise a family here. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely an expensive house with all those money trees, but if you can afford it, I think it's pretty practical. It, maybe if you're a spellcaster, otherwise some things may be a bit weird. Uh, <laughs> I love that toy chest as well with all the like the sort of blocks falling out of it. I don't use that nearly often enough. I guess I kind of forget about it, but I think it's a really nice like, decorative item to add in. Makes it feel a little bit more dynamic and alive. Um, then we have this weird like <laughs> hallway that goes to the room, which I didn't want to be the actual hallway of the house. So I just turned that into part of the room and we got a dresser there. Obviously a baby and a toddler won't use that, but you know, kid, teen will be able to use that no problem. Uh, so at this point I was like, oh yeah, we've got to have an organ. There's going to be an organ somewhere in the house. And then I decided, you know what? No, let's, <laughs> let's turn this into a sauna. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. That that was my that was my brilliant idea was to make this a sauna. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is probably the worst part of the house. It's just so random. I don't know. If you have another idea of what should actually go there, look. I guess I probably could have done another bedroom. Originally, I wasn't sure what to do because it was a three by three room. But as you can see, I literally expanded the room to make room for a sauna. At which point, probably would have made more sense to be. Uh, probably move the bathroom there and have another bedroom where the current bathroom is. So the, um, yeah, the bathroom's like in the hall rather than... <laughs> well, you got a sauna. If you, if you want to use a sauna, it's there. Hey, this is a magical house. They have fun with it. Now we've got this upper level, which in the past, as you can see, literally just had a cauldron. But I was like, let's make this a little bit more nice. So this is kind of the magical space. So we have the organ up there. Not magical, but I don't know. It's kind of a showpiece. So I figured it's also like the entertaining space. I had like a bar and stuff up here as well. We've got the organ, a bar. Uh, we've got the cauldron, which you can see is just in the other room there. Uh, I think it's a pretty nice space, actually, all the way up the top of this house. It is a little bit more open, only because the walls are quite tall. Like, you can still see it's quite divided into rooms here. But I think it actually, it, it turns out really nice. I'm actually pretty pleased with it. I get rid of the older floorboards and we go in with those nice, more ornate looking ones. I don't know, it seems quite classy to me, you know. Even though it's an old house, it does seem like it's got a bit of class. I also like the idea of the organ being up the top here. I could imagine that circular window maybe like pops open so you could play the organ and you could like hear it outside or something. I don't know. It just seemed like a nice place. And also because the roof of the house is like so steep, I feel like the acoustics could be good. I have no idea if it would be, but it seems like a place to me that made sense for it. That's why it's there. And there's a couple armchairs there to hang out. Also got like that cabinet there, which I believe you can put gems and uh, potions and stuff inside of. They'll fit in there which is quite nice. And then, so this is kind of almost just like a, I guess, a lobby area. And then you go into like the entertainment space, which actually has a bar um, and then some some seating. And I believe I'd do another fireplace maybe. I'm not sure. You know, I, I kind of make it a little bit of an attraction. And then this room here is like a three wide, super long hallway kind of thing. I actually turn that into almost like a games room. Like I do, uh, I think the foosball table maybe. I don't know, I do a few things in there. We'll see in a minute. Um, yeah, I, I think it actually turns out pretty interesting. And then across the way there, you can see that's where the cauldron is over in the turret, um, just over there. So it's just sort of out of the way, but you could prepare mac and cheese or a uh, chili, and then you can have someone work in the drinks here. So you'd have food and drinks all in this one entertainment space. Pretty good if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of fun. And of course, I've got to bring some greenery in here because it is looking very brown, very sort of gray in color. So I think the greenery and the plants are quite nice. And plenty of seating. Oh, and we got the uh, sort of old record player at the back there, which I felt was quite fitting. So we can have music here, don't worry. Definitely a nice entertaining space. I actually quite like this area. And then through here, I was gonna turn it into like a little uh, sort of library space. Uh, then I realized that felt really closed in. Also, when you put the walls down, it's super annoying. Uh, so I kind of changed my mind on that. Turn it into a games area. Oh, that's what I did. Did a Don't Wake the Llama game table, foosball table. Uh, just there in the middle, so you can play a couple games in there. And then I remove those, and I think I just maybe I put a TV in here actually. I think I turn it into just like, yeah, like a lounge entertainment space because we have the TV that one really old TV in the living room downstairs. I was like, let's maybe do something a bit newer in here. You know, 
Yeah, they they may be spellcasters, but they still like watching Netflix, you know. So and but well, no, YouTube, they like watching SimTube. They like watching Samaj Renrut on SimTube. That's what I should say. <laughs> so they need they need a good TV. <laughs> so yeah, that's the cauldron room. Nothing too special about that. Literally just put a cauldron in it. I think that worked well. Then we have this little balcony out here, which I thought was quite nice. I actually put a barbecue out here again. Figured it was quite a good entertaining, this whole level, sort of like the entertainment space. And I thought that was quite a good spot for it. I also later realized it's a great spot to do a telescope, like the smaller ones. So I think I remove maybe that dining table. I remove something to fit a telescope in because I think it, or maybe I remove the barbecue. I don't know. Anyway, these two rooms up here, I, I kind of forgot about them originally. And then I and then I went up and I was like, you know what? We're spellcasters. This is a witch's home. We probably should have like a secret space you can only get to with magic. So you can get to that using the transportalate spell. Or I guess if you're good at wellness, you can also teleport with that. Or if you're a vampire, you could probably fly there as a bat, I would assume. I think you can fly anywhere, right? As a bat. So... Yeah, you need one of a variety of teleportation features, or cheat, obviously. But this is where I put the vault, because as you can see, we have $1.3 million in this. And I was like, I'm going to put a vault here. I'm going to shovel my money now. I'm also just putting random items. I don't know. I was like, I just kind of want stuff here that looks like they maybe they stored it in this secret room. <laughs> like all their prized possessions, expensive pictures. I've got so much money. I was considering just buying a bunch of those violins because they're 13 grand each, but I figured that's kind of a waste. Like it also just looked a bit silly. So I got one. And then this room, I don't again, I had another secret room. I was like, I don't know. Let's turn this into like a spy room. You come in here, this is where you like listen in when you plant bugs and other sims for Strangerville. It's kind of like, I don't know, this is weird uh, spy room up there. And then this turret over here uh, is just open all the way up. So it's a really high roof when you're sitting uh, on the dining table just for a little bit of decoration and aesthetics. And I'm just finishing off the window placement on that. And then I think there's a few more windows around the place because it's a bit strange. And also landscaping because there's not a lot going on outside. So we've got to neaten it up a little bit. I really don't like here in Glimmerbrook that bright orangey yellow uh, cliff that appears. It definitely should be like a darker color. Uh, so I'm just trying to cover it up because there's not enough room to the edge of the lot to really smooth it out as much. And I, I still wanted the hill there. Uh, so I was trying to figure out a good way to do it. So I was like, let's just put a bunch of plants on it. Also, it probably should be quite green and lush. Uh, so that's what we're going ahead and doing. Um, yeah, I think the house finally, after three years, has turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you guys are too. Uh, we're going to definitely have to make a point of actually visiting the house now because I've done all this work, we may as well enjoy it within the game. Now we have two uh, tombstones here. I believe one is uh, Canoe Reefs, which is Plantain's father, uh, AKA Colin Big Wallet's half sister. So that's her father. I think the other one, uh, I actually can't remember. Is it just Colin Big Wallet? Cause I, I know they, I'm pretty sure they, oh, maybe it was Plantain. Because I think some of the Sims died at some point and then I resurrected them with um, magic or something. I don't know. But we have two of them. So I made sure to keep them. I was like, uh, let's chuck them in the back here. <laughs> we'll do like a little little space here. Uh, and also well, at the end of this time, we'll jump into the game. So we'll, we'll check out actually who they are. I can't remember. I think it popped up really quickly when I was doing this, but I, I didn't quite catch it while I was watching back here. I just did like one little bit of fence here because I figured I wanted it to feel like it was sort of intentional and they weren't just placed there. So I did a little fence. I didn't want to go all the way around because I felt like that was too much for this space. But one fence, a couple of flowers left there for them. Pretty nice. And I figured we literally have no way to get out the back of the house. So I was like, we probably should create some form of exit <laughs> from the house down here. Uh, so yeah, I just sort of connected that balcony there out of the gate. And I'm doing like a little pathway coming down this hill. And actually I think this turns out pretty nice too because I think this little winding path. And I basically just add a bunch of flowers and uh, shrubbery just to fill it in because I like I said I felt, I, again I felt like it should be almost overgrown with uh, plants and and greenery you know this is a very old house it's also magical so you could imagine that just you know whip up some magic make sure everything's alive and well and growing uh, and also we have that little planting room just there we've got the bee box as well it's all it's all like really nice and, and colorful, you know, that, that's what I was going for. And then a little bit of terrain painting here just to sort of blend stuff in because it's just also blank. I think everything was just chucked down here at some point. It's actually really nice. This terrain paint that I'm using now was added in 
uh, with The Sims 4 werewolves. It's base game, so everyone has it. But you can even see this, well, that brown, dirty, um, it's kind of like a pine tree needle. It's even used in this world. So they used it in a bunch of worlds already before they eventually added it in. So that pathway around is that same uh, landscaping uh, terrain paint, which is amazing that we now have it. So you can actually match certain things in the world. <laughs> I'm really glad about. Uh, now around here, this is the front of the house. We've got a bit of a random kind of turret. It's like a support for the rest of the house. And we've got this front balcony. It's like, we should probably do something out here. I don't want to do too much. Like, I didn't really want it to be uh, a heavily trafficked area. So I added like a couple of benches and stuff around there. Nothing too much. Uh, yeah, so there's the telescope. I added the werewolf one because I thought it looked a little bit nicer. Just up there. And then around here on the balconies, adding a couple benches. Um, and then I'm moving a bin a little bit closer to the house because it was kind of all the way down the bottom, I think. So I just moved it up a little bit closer, tucked it around the corner. Uh, and then just some lights as well. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and jump into the game and finally look at what this house looks like completed. All right, here we are. It is the middle of winter and quite clearly it looks like they're decorated as well. <laughs> I think if I go to build mode, do I have the snow? Oh yeah, good. I got the mod that turns off the weather. All right, so here is the house. I think it is so fun. Ignore the <laughs> decorations on it. But I think I'm just zooming out so I can get a look of it in Glimmerbrook. I feel like it definitely fits. I feel like it suits really well. I'm really quite happy with it. Go down here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's 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 beautiful. That's the the magic witch's towel that we needed. So this house is uh, like I said. <laughs> oh my gosh, 1.8 million. It was actually cheaper before, but since I added uh, a million simoleons, oh I think 1.2 million into the vault, it's a lot more expensive now. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. So. Let's start on the ground floor. So it's actually kind of cool because you sort of walk under this archway here. This is the main entrance. We do have a bin here and a, the mailbox there. And then there's another bin a little bit closer. And then we have this greenhouse, which houses all of our money trees. So they're hanging out all in here. They're worth a lot of money. Uh, and then, yeah, so we've got a couple of stairs here that come down to get to it a little bit easier. But the main stairs are here. You come into the main entrance, which is now a little bit more well-defined. Just through there, and then we've got the kitchen in this area, which I think, hang on, let's jump down like this, that's a bit better. I think it's much more fitting for this house. There's Ticket the Familiar, and Ticket's bowl is right next to him. So that's great. So this is the kitchen. I think it's kind of fun, very nice. And then in the back is this little dining area, which I like it. Oh, that light's gotta go, because there's no ceiling there. <laughs> the ceiling's up there, so I gotta move that. She don't really need a light, hang on, because it's actually pretty bright in there. I will get I will get a, a wall light though, maybe on one one on each side. Just to make sure there's enough light. Yeah, so that's hanging out just in there. I think that's I, that's actually I really like that. I really like that. So that's the kitchen. Uh we'll head back out this way. The stairs, I think this is one of my favorite things, the way they sort of curve up and around. I feel like that is totally a spellcaster's house. Kind of reminds me of like the Weasley's house. Even though it's literally nothing like it, but I, I don't know, just like the stairwell where you can sort of see around, it's kind of fun. All right, so then we go down this hallway, and on the left here is the bathroom, just through here. Oh yeah, nice and magical, using all the realm of magic stuff. And also, get famous, golden bathtub, <laughs> the golden goose, a little bit of fun. And then this way is the office, like a little magical office, nice bookcases, desk there, and a little sort of storage unit on the side. And then this is kind of like, I guess, a lobby or foyer. Uh, the chess table, that's column hanging out right there. And then through this door is, I guess, the main living room down the bottom here. Nice and cozy. We got a, a kind of, I like that. I think it, it's from Vampires, but it kind of looks like a magical book. Also got a dog bed there too for Ticket. And then back out this way, probably one of my favorite things as well, is a sort of little garden space through here. We got all these plants, which I think is really nice. And the flower arranging table. I mean, look, that's a beautiful view. Flower arranging, looking out of that. I mean, come on, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? All right, then let's go, let's jump out of this mode because it gets a little bit sickening touring the whole house like that. Uh, we'll go into the basement quickly. This is just a little sort of aesthetic makeover, the exact same layout, but a little bit different through here. And then up on the next level, this layout changed a lot, <laughs> this sauna. Okay, the sauna was probably a mistake, but the rest is great. Uh, nice family bathroom there. I actually really like this bedroom. I really like the bed like that, it's so much fun. And we have the little nursery through here too, which I also think is really, really nice. And then down this way, we've got this double bedroom here with the bed on a platform and a little ensuite bathroom through there. 
and a little changing area, a little sitting area. And then the final bedroom through this way, which I actually quite like this little section here uh, with the door and then the archway and then the ensuite through there. Probably could fit a bathtub in there if I wanted, but kept it pretty simple. And then, yeah, this bedroom just there at the end of the house. And then moving upstairs once more, we have the entertainment level. So we've got this huge hanging chandelier, which I think looks beautiful. Uh, and then we've got the organ in that space and a little sort of seating area. And that's like a trophy cabinet. Well, no, you can put like the gems and stuff in there. And then we have like the bar and uh, the little sort of music record player. Got a barbecue area out the back with a telescope and we've got the cauldron through there. And then in this area, we've got a little entertainment space. That's plantain hanging out right there. Foosball table, don't wake the llama. TV, very nice. And of course, we've got the secret teleportation only rooms with the vault and the sort of spy, <laughs> the spy room there, which I think is kind of fun. Now, what, who, who are these? Who are these people? We've got Canute Reefs, like I said, and, oh, Simeon Silver Sweater. So that is Reginald's dad. So Reginald uh, is the son of Colum and Simeon the uh, sage, so I mean, he's got magical blood. And yeah, that's the house. There it is. If you want to download this, I'll be uploading it as Evil Witch Tower. So you'll be able to check it out on the gallery, play with it yourself. You might need to place it and maybe delete the money trees to be able to afford it or just cheat because it's a lot of money. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Make sure to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback down below and have an awesome day.